once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. And this is uh, day four, the fourth day of work at training camp. But it's actually, in my mind, the fifth day because on Tuesday they had conditioning. And that's working your legs pretty darn well. So really, they've been on their legs, running, running around, working pretty hard for five straight days. Uh, the fourth straight day of practice, and that's going to be the longest stretch in all of training camp. The rest of training camp, they won't have more than three work days before they have a day off. So this day off that they've got on uh, on Sunday uh, it was something the players were looking forward to big time. So it was open uh, season for, for the fans at Paul Brown Stadium. It was a gathering of, they're saying it was approximately 15,000 fans showed up uh, to see this practice. And again, it was just that. There were no shoulder pads, uh, helmets, jerseys. They did have the little foam, foam rubber shoulder pads to detect uh, it, it, from casual contact and that sort of thing. But the big pads don't come on until Tuesday. So the team has Sunday off, and, and they uh, practice with the uh, foam pads in, in the, on Monday. And then big boy pads, shoulder pads come on on Tuesday. And, and that's when we're going to really start some to see some thumping, some hitting that's going on. And I, I, I really can't, uh, can't wait to, for that to tell you the truth. So... Um, but I will say that every practice that they've had has been up tempo. The energy has been really off the charts. They're getting work done, start to finish every single practice. They're going out there and, and getting after things. In today's practice, they uh, they did a pretty good job in in hitting three phases that are very very important during the course of any football game, and that's the screen game, third down, and red zone. And today it was a little red zone. Yesterday's red zone was inside the 20 yard line today's red zone was at the 10 yard line or inside the 10 yard line on first and goal situations. So um, they, they went after those three, three areas pretty darn well. Let's start with the screen game. Uh, the Bengals are, are running that stretch running play pretty well. And they're attacking, uh, they're attacking the wide areas of the football field. Uh, they're also running pitches and tosses to get outside as well. So there's two ways you can stretch the football field vertically and horizontally. And today's running game was a big time stretching uh, the field horizontally. Well, the screen game does the exact same thing. The screen game is basically an extension of the running game. So, you know, once you get that stretch run going and, and tossing and pitching the football and then get the screen game involved as well. And they went to multiple tack, uh, targets. They used, utilized the tight ends. The first screen went to Drew Sample. C.J. Uzama caught a screen also as a tight end position. So they, Went tight end screen. They went screens to Joe Mixon, which is always a good thing to do. Get the ball in Joe Mixon's hands in space with offensive linemen in front of them. That's a that's a pretty good uh, recipe for success. And then they also went with the wide receiver screen, um, and they had a lineman out in front executing uh, on their behalf as well. And the thing about the screen game is, is like I said, it, it it helps stretch the football field horizontally extension of that running game, easy completion for the quarterback. He gets his confidence built. He sees a ball being completed. He gets the yards passing that, uh, that they'll get by generating yards after catch and yards after contact on the catch. So all that goes in the quarterback's passing uh, statistics. So really it's a way to help a quarterback uh, get settled in, you know, if there's any kind of a struggle, go to that screen. The other thing is it makes the defensive lineman chase. They have to pursue. I mean, they, they, they can't just stand there and watch the screen. They got to rush the quarterback. When the screen pass is completed, they have to turn and run and take a good pursuit angle, and they have to get after it. And it'll fatigue them a little bit. You know, we used to use the screen for that uh, purpose big time with Paul Brown. He was a head coach. Uh, when he was the head coach, he wanted to just fatigue these defensive linemen by making them have to run after these screens. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a huge weapon that way. So there's a lot of benefits for having a screen game, I think, I think the Bengals are going to be a good screen team. I think they're going to run every screen. Known to me. We talked about it before here on podcast. Uh, they've got an unbelievable talent to run screens to in uh, Jamar Chase. I mean, this kid is built like you got The first time I saw his legs when he was wearing shorts, he is, he's got the legs of a very, very strong running back. And he's uh, got a low center of gravity. He's going to be hard to tackle. Once you catch that screen pass, to wrap him up and get him on the ground with, with one guy, man, I, I think he's going to 
make make the first guy miss, run through the first guy. I think he's going to be a snoozer. He'll be alone in that screen game. So I'd screen, uh, I'd screen Chase and make the defensive lineman chase after Chase. That'd be a big deal. So that's uh, that's item number one that they did a good job of in today's practice. All right, another couple of periods that they devoted uh, today's practice to was the third down, and uh, that that's huge. That third down and then red zone, those two areas, if you, if you win on third down and you win in the red zone, you are going to win the football game. Third down offensively, you're trying to extend drives. You're trying to generate time of possession advantage. You're trying to control field position, and, uh, and ultimately points will come. So that's the big thing that you're trying to get done. Then the opposite is, is true on defense. You're trying to get off the field. You know, one, two, three, and out is the goal, obviously. But you're trying to get off the field on third down. You're trying to put the offense in third and long situations. And you're trying to control field position. So you, you want to have a, have a situation where you're running 15 to 20 plays more than the opponent when the football game's over with because you converted 55 60% of your third downs and they only converted 35% of their third downs. So third down execution was, uh, was worked on today. And, uh, and, and that's going to be a, a huge factor in, in what the Bengals uh, get done during the course of the season offensively and defensively. And offensively, you can, with the wide receivers that they've got, all the options and weapons that they've got to throw the football to, uh, tight ends, running backs, I mean, th- this should be a pretty good third down team. Joe Burrow does a good job of diagnosing uh, coverages, diagnosing pre snap blitz looks. I mean, he's, he's got the answers to the test. Uh, before the uh, before the actual test is passed out, so he he does a good job in that regard. And so third down execution is is always going to be massive. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Breaks? What are those? That's what I'm talking about. If you get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know. Yeah. Gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com. So the other area and the final area that was worked on today was low red zone. And, of course, that's inside the 10-yard line, not just inside the 20-yard line. This is a first and goal situation. And uh, I'll tell you what, third down in red zone. So there's nothing that is – more of a momentum builder in football, in my opinion, than scoring a third down touchdown in the red zone. <laughs> That's a double whammy. I mean, that just takes the year out of a defense. They do a pretty good job on first and second down in the red zone. And they think, hey, this is going to, you know, nothing more than a field goal opportunity. And then you score a touchdown on third down red zone. So you get a, you get a conversion on third down and you put seven points on the board instead of, instead of having to settle for three. So, man, when you can get that done, there's nothing better, believe me. And the reverse is true. If a defense can hold on third down and then make you settle for that field goal instead of the touchdown, that could be a momentum builder as well. But particularly if they've been struggling and all of a sudden they pull their necks a little bit and, and uh, hold on third down in the red zone or uh, in the low red zone and, and make a, an opponent kick a field goal and, and maintain a lead, that, that's big. Those kind of things are big. Those kind of things are going to win your football game. So uh, red zone execution is, is, is massive. There's, there's a, no question about it. And you, when, when you get in the red zone, you want to score touchdowns, obviously. You don't want to have to settle for field goals. And um, one kid that, that really made an impression the last couple of days at the wide receiver position in the red zone is uh, Trent Taylor. Trent Taylor is 5'8", over 180 pounds. So he's put together. He's he's uh, he's on, on that frame on a five inch frame to uh, to put over 180 pounds on it. The kid the kid is uh, he's he's worked out. He's out of Louisiana Tech. He's fifth year in the league. They picked him up as a free agent from the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, this this kid the last two days in the red zone he has made acrobatic catches that have led to red zone touchdowns. The catch he had today he made it made the catch realized that he had to put the ball in one hand. Get it inside the pylon before you get knocked out of bounds, and he scored a touchdown. It was just, it was very, uh, very instinctive for him to realize the situation that he was in. It was very athletic to pull it off, and the fact is, he's not a, he's not a one-hit wonder. He's done it two days in a row now. 
he had a he had a catch where he uh, made a great catch with both feet in bounds before getting knocked out of uh, the corner of the end zone in yesterday's red zone. So it's like now the coaches are saying, hey, that's two days in a row. And that's what you want to do if you're a, a wide receiver that's trying to win that fifth or sixth job at the wide receiver position. You want the, the coaches to realize, hey, I'm not a one-hit wonder. I can stack good practices together. I can stack back-to-back-to-back practices. And then all of a sudden the coaches take notice. And instead of working with the number threes, you move up to, hey, I'll, I'll work with the number twos and the number ones and see w- what happens when you match up against uh, the, the, the top-end uh, top competition. So uh, Trent Del- Taylor has done nothing to hurt himself in his bid to, uh, to make this football team because he's uh, excellent on special teams as well. He's a punt returner. He can return kickoffs. I mean, he's a pretty versatile kid. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to, to watch him. And, and he, he made a name for himself, you know, I think, here in practice in, uh, in red zone the last couple of days. So I think uh, situational football, you're talking third down, you're talking red zone, and also the screen game, which is an extension of, uh, of, of a good running game. All these components, I think, are going to help the Cincinnati Bengals offense and uh, in defense working against that offense and, and defending them during the course of the football game win games. If you, uh, if you can defend the screen, you can uh, you can put yourself in better position to win the game. If you can execute screen game, you can put yourself in better position. Third down, stay on the field, sustain drives, offensively, defensively, get off the field. And if you can shut a team out 0 for 9 on third down, which does happen in the National Football League, that, that's big time. And then red zone, red zone execution. That's the name of the game. That's where the rubber meets the road. So that was pretty much uh, what the Bengals – uh, went through on the fourth day of work. In my mind, it was the fifth day because I'm including, including the conditioning. And they get a well-deserved uh, day off from a player standpoint. No day off for the coaches, though. They're in there working away. They're in there grinding. And the uh, players come back on Monday. And then, like I said, on Tuesday, the football pads come on. Now, they won't be taking guys to the ground. They won't be tackling every day at training camp. There will only be certain periods of of, uh, of each practice that might be made live where you're going to tackle and take guys to the ground. But the thump drill, everything else is live except tackling. It's live in the offensive and defensive line. It's live blocking linebackers. It's live blocking everywhere and separating blocks everywhere. The only thing is you don't take Joe Mixon and the other running backs to the ground. And uh, by the way, Joe Mixon, oh, he looked unbelievable today as well. Joe Mixon is in incredible shape. If I'm the coaching staff, I put Joe Mixon in saran wrap. I don't play him in the preseason. I don't, I don't take any chance on uh, having some kind of crazy injury. I want him for the opener on the 12th of September against the Minnesota Vikings at Paul Brown Stadium. Joe Mixon looks good. Hi, Dave Lapham here. Have you heard about In the Trenches with Dave Lapham presented by First Star Logistics? Catch new episodes from the world of sports and broadcasting. Search for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.